Before I get started, how many of you would say that you're a guest or you haven't been here in a really long time? Raise your hand. If they don't raise their hand, I'm not counting it. I'm just saying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One in the back of the other, somebody. That, okay, we got more than 10. All right, Denise, give me 10 minutes. I think so. I can't answer your question. I got to go. My Bible is over here. Oh, no. So much like this song, the song said, it said, follow your heart and nothing else, right? Follow your heart and nothing else. And when I was a youth pastor, I can't tell you how many well-meaning parents tell their teenagers that. They say, follow your heart and nothing else. And really, when I started watching these parents talking to their teenagers, what they're really saying is, follow what I want you to do and nothing else, right? We try to get our kids to go down the right path. But we tell them to follow their heart, but we really want them to follow what we think their best interests are. But it's not just our teenagers. Maybe you've had that conversation with them. Or maybe you've had that conversation with many a well-meaning pastor. Pastor, what am I supposed to do with this life? What am I supposed to do next? And many of us are very well-meaning. We'll say, well, just follow your heart. Do what God wants you to do. Follow your heart. Your heart will lead you to the right place. Just follow your heart. When we think about maybe where we're supposed to move, we'll say, well, just follow your heart. Pastor, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do about my job. What job should I take? Should I leave this one? Should I take the next one? And we say, well, just follow your heart. Well, who should I marry? Well, Pastor, who should I marry? Well, just follow your heart. But if we read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. So really, the Bible is telling us the exact opposite. The Bible is telling us that we shouldn't follow our hearts. That sometimes our hearts will lead us into the dark places. Sometimes our hearts will lead us to places that we never intended to go. But we tell so many people, just follow your hearts. But the Bible says, don't follow your heart. What you need to do is you need to give your entire heart to Jesus. You need to give everything that's in your heart to Jesus. And then it says, in all your ways, submit. Man, that's tough. Submission is so tough. Because listen, I know what job I want. Like, I don't need to ask God. I know the job that's best for me. It's the one that makes more money, right? I don't need to ask God who, should, who I should marry. It's the person that makes me the happiest right now. I don't need to ask God where I need to move. It's obviously the house that's closer to the beach. That's just the way it should be. But the Bible says we should give our entire hearts to him, to submit everything to him. And some of us fight that our whole lives. For some of us, that's the entire reason that we don't even come to Christ, because we fight that submission. I have to have somebody else have authority over my life. Why would I ever let that happen? But what we don't realize is that there's so much freedom in submission. There's so much freedom and submission, and life is so much more satisfying when we submit. But we don't like that because, listen, you and I know what's best for our lives. We can follow our hearts to the places that we need to go because you and I know what's best. We know who to marry. That's easy. We know we're supposed to take that better paying job because that'll make everything in life so much simpler. But the Bible tells us he will direct our paths. But if you listen, it's really conditional. There's three things that that's conditional upon. The first one is this, we must trust in the Lord with all our heart. 
the Lord directing your path, it all starts with trust. Every bit of it starts with trust. You have to surrender the things of your heart and believe that he is going to lead you down the right path before he can ever begin to lead you. And this is just like what happens when we get married. On the day that we get married, we trust and submit and believe that the person that we are marrying are going to keep their vows. And we trust in that. And we believe in that. And it's the same thing that happens with God. We have to be willing to trust that he is going to take us to the places that he he wants us to go. But the thing is, is that the enemy of our souls, he doesn't want us to trust God. The enemy of our souls, he wants us to doubt. He wants to put things in your way. And we talked about this a little bit last week. He wants to put things in front of you that make you doubt that he has any good intentions for your life. He says, don't trust God. Figure out how to do it on your own. You don't need him. Don't trust God. You've got this. There's people, there's ways that you can set up. You've got this. Do it all on your own. But if we want the Lord to direct our paths, it all begins with trust. The second thing that it's conditional upon is it says, lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. When, if I read this, what that tells me is that means that there's two different types of understanding. There's my understanding, and then there's God's understanding. There's two different types. And if you read Proverbs 16, 25, it says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. There's a way that seems right to your heart, but in the end, it leads to death. And think about this. Some of you, you could look back on your time and you could say that person in high school that you prayed that God would allow you to marry, how well would that have worked out? Or maybe that job that you prayed for and you never got, maybe that company is dissolved now and you'd be completely without a job. Maybe that house by the beach that you prayed for was hit by a hurricane and it's not even there anymore. But we have to trust that the Lord is going to direct us. We have to believe that he has a higher understanding than we do. And we say all the time, well, you know what? I did that and I had good intentions. I think that there's an amazing quote by someone that says, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. We have to believe that his understanding is better than our own. And in fact, if anything that we think is right, if it contradicts God's word, it's never a good idea. If what you want to do contradicts God's word, and if your understanding is different than God's word, it's never a good idea for you to do it. And the third thing is this. You have to acknowledge him in all of your ways. If you want the Lord to direct your paths, you have to acknowledge him in all of your ways. What does that mean? What does it mean to acknowledge him in all of your ways? Well, what it means is you have to proclaim who he is. You have to proclaim who he is. And you say, okay, that doesn't make any more sense, pastor. What does that mean? Well, that means that you imitate the life that he lived. That's the only way that you can do that. And what happens is by imitating his life that he shed for us, we begin to show all of those people around us his love and his mercy and his grace, and we acknowledge him for who he is. And what that will mean is we have to forgive as he forgave. And let me tell you something. The word that we translate to forgive it actually means to forget. And we say all the time, you know, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. But those two words are exactly the same. 
And you say, well, that's not very fair. You're right, it's not very fair. But neither was the fact that the Creator had to come and die for all of our sins. That's what grace is. But He leads our paths as we acknowledge Him. He leads our paths as we lean on His understanding. And He leads our paths as we trust in Him. If the worship team would come this morning... You guys stand with me. I was done. This morning, here in a few moments, we are going to get to partake as heaven rejoices as we baptize a young brother. It's one of the most amazing experiences that we get to partake in, I think, this side of heaven. And this morning, if you are with us and you realize that you have never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to give you the opportunity this morning to come and to give your life to Him. And we can baptize you here this morning. <coughs> Will you pray with me? <coughs> Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the blessings that you give us, Lord. We just thank you for all that you've done in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this baptism that we get to partake in this morning, Lord. And we pray that we can rejoice with you. I pray for those that are here with us this morning, Lord, that don't know you, Lord. I pray that you begin to move upon their hearts right now. That they would make their way down here and they can give their life to you this morning. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.